All right, guys, as usual, starting off the day with breakfast, and I'm actually going to a place that a viewer recommended to me. His Instagram name is Vegan Gym. Shout out to you, thank you for the recommendation, and uh, hopefully I enjoy this place. It's called like Violet's Juice Bar or something like that, so headed there now. Right, guys just finished our food oh it was super awesome thank you to vegan gym for recommending that place that'll be one of the regular places i go to when i come back to vegas but now time to go to the strip and play some poker lose control able to find parking in the Miracle Mile shops headed to MGM Grand. I might go to Aria afterwards. So, see you there. Alright, back in the Airbnb. Oh, almost forgot my key again. Here we go. First hand of the session, we were playing five-handed, and I looked down at ace five of hearts in the cutoff. The hijack limps, I raise it up to 12, and the hijack calls. Flop comes ace six and a low card with two spades. My opponent checks to me, and I go ahead and put out a C bet of $15, and he makes the call. Turn is the 10 of clubs, he checks to me once again, and I'm still gonna continue here. I wanna continue charging his flush jaws, and I have a huge range advantage, so even if he has an ace that beats mine, I can maybe push him off of it. I may get $37, and he calls once again. River comes another six, and this time my opponent leads out and shoves for his remaining $56. Now that another six is out there, we are chopping with anything other than ace jack plus and ace six and ace ten. Pretty unlikely he has those since he just limps and then calls. So I end up making the call and he turns over ace eight. So we do in fact chop this hand. Chop, chop, chop. In this next hand, I'm dealt pocket tens on the button. The low jack, who is a younger player, limps. I raise it to 12 and the low jack calls. So heads up to a flop, which comes king nine, nine, two spades. My opponent actually donk bets and bets $17. I'm gonna make the call here. I think it's a little too weak to fold to just one bet. Turn brings the three of spades, completing the flush, but we do have the 10 of spades. So in addition to to having tens, we also have a flush draw to go along with it. My opponent bets out again, this time betting $25. Still a pretty small bet, and after picking up a flush draw, not gonna fold here, so I make the call. The river is the ace of diamonds, which is actually a pretty good card because we have a huge range advantage being the prefop raiser, and um, my opponent, if he does have a king that he's leading out with, then he's probably gonna be afraid of the ace. This time, my opponent checks it over to me, so in my mind, this kind of turns his hand pretty face up. It looks like a king that got scared on the river um, and might be possibly scared of the flush draw as well. He has about 142 left, so I decide to just put maximum pressure and put them all in. I can have ace king, I could have a nine, I could have a flush, and um, looks really weak when he checks here after leading out twice. So I put them all in and he pretty quickly folds, so we get this one through. This next one's a fun one. I'm in under the gun with six five of hearts and I decide to open this hand to $12. The hijack, who was an elderly player who actually bluffs quite a bit and was pretty spewy, makes a call. The cutoff and the big blind call as well, so we're going four ways to a flop, which comes five, six, queen, two clubs. The big blind checks it over to me and I go ahead and put out a C bet of $35. And the hijack, who was the elderly player who was kind of spewy, makes a call. Turn is the nine of spades. And I decide I'm gonna size it up here. So this time I make it $85 and he folds. All right, this next hand, we get dealt pocket kings under the gun limps. I raise it up to $12. The cutoff calls and the button, who was the elderly spewy player, three bets to $25. Action folds back to me. We're both playing pretty deep stacks. So I decide I'm gonna four bet this hand to $80. So we're going heads up to a flop, which comes seven, eight jack, two spades. Kind of a wet flop, but we shouldn't be scared of too much except maybe pocket jacks. I put out a C bet of $90 and my opponent pretty quickly makes the call. Turn is another jack, which is a good card because now there's only one combo of pocket jacks. I have $269 left in my sack, so I go ahead and shove it in there. He doesn't think too long before announcing a call. The river brings the ace of clubs. Once I show my hand, he goes ahead and mucks. So we take down this huge pot and we double up our already pretty large stack. I was like, regrettably, I'm out. Yeah. But it was. Yeah. <laughs> you get it for the yeah. 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 That was the biggest hand of the night. There's one more hand that I found was pretty interesting and I'm curious about your thoughts on it. I'm in under the gun plus two with ace jack of diamonds. The under the gun player raises to 10 and I decide I'm gonna three bet this hand and I make it 33. And the big blind who was a young recreational player, four bet shoves for $146. 
the Under the Gun player Fold, and now action is back on me. It's 113 more to me to call, and H Jack isn't normally a hand I'd call with in a situation like this. This player was fairly active, but he didn't seem super speary or anything. But just based on like the rhythm of the game and table dynamic, he just seemed like one of those young recreational players um, who liked to play short stacked, which he had been doing. And I noticed that a lot of these types of players, when they're playing short stacked, sometimes get impatient and shove with ace high or small pocket pairs and things like that. In general, I'd lean more towards a fold with ace jack in this situation. I think ace queen, I could call it off. I don't know, it might be borderline, but I think for a very long time, and I eventually make the call. Flop brings the deuce of diamonds and two other low cards. Turn is another middling or low card, and the river is a jack. Correction, the river was not a jack, it was actually an ace, because I remember that I was worried about him having ace queen or ace king. So, it was an ace and not a jack. I show my hand, and my opponent turns over ace jack offsuit. So, we end up chopping this one, which I thought was pretty interesting. Oh, I see. It's a new thing, new genre of poker content. That's 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 what mine's for. Mine's to learn what not to do. Good luck, guys. Nice meeting you. Thank you. A win of four hundred and nine dollars. Clothes on the floor, but the bed's on the ceiling. In the third hand, since I sat down, I looked down at King, Queen of Spades in the big blind. There are three limps. This is a 1-3 game this time, so I decide to raise it up to $20, and I get called by the hijack. So we're going heads up to a flop, which comes deuce, king, three, rainbow. I put out a C-bet of $35, and the hijack makes the call. Turn is the 10 of spades, so now we have the king high flush draw to go along with our top pair. And this time I actually decide to check. I think checking here in this specific situation is a better option than continuing betting. My opponent has about a pot size bet left behind or less. There are pretty much no bad turn cards that can come from me. Every spade gives me a king high flush. There aren't a ton of potential straight draws that I need to protect against. I think the only somewhat bad cards might be like a non-spade ace. The main reason I checked though was because I think at lower stakes, a lot of players will assume that if you have top pair, you're just gonna play it straightforwardly and continue betting. So I decided that checking here will make me look kind of weak. That's what I decide to do and my opponent checks back. He rivers the four of clubs and I think for a while before putting my opponent all in for what ends up being $99. He thinks for quite a long time and looks like he wants to fold, but eventually makes the call. I turn over my hand and we're good. In this next hand, I look down at ace jack offsuit in the hijack. The low jack limps, I raise it up to $15 and get called by the button, the small blind, and the low jack. So we're going four ways to a flop, which comes four jack ace, two diamonds. Action checks me and I put out a c-bet of $45 and with multiple players in the hand I think that there are plenty of hands that can call me and I do want to charge them as much as I can. The button raises to $125. Action folds back to me and my opponent has about 200 20-ish left behind. I think for a while and eventually shove for what ends up being 350-ish effective. Now action's back on the button. He goes into the tank for a really long time and eventually lets his hand go after showing it to the person next to him. After the hand, he claims that he had pocket fours. Not really sure how much truth there is to that, but um, we take down a pretty large pot. I said a four, man. I said a four. In this next hand, we look down at pocket sevens in the small blind. There are three limps. I raise to $15. All three of the limpers call. Flop comes pretty safe. It is three deuce four, two spades. I go ahead and put out a C bet of $40. The under the gun player calls, the under the gun plus two player folds, and the low jack shoves for $192. This is the same player who I had stacked when I had king queen. Kind of a weird situation because there aren't a ton of combos of hands that he should have for value here. I thought about it for a while and I'm not sure if this is that good of a decision, but I eventually decided that I was gonna get it in against that player and uh, I didn't want the under the gun player to call as well. So I went ahead and reshoved. The under the gun player had maybe 200 something left behind. Since he just called my bet, then I think shoving here will get him out of the hand. So that's what I do. And he instantly folds his hand, board runs out, Queen of spades, five of hearts. My opponent shakes his head. I ask him if sevens are good, and then I show my hand. Seven's good? Are sevens good? Huh? Sevens are good? Oh, I just saw you shaking your head. I, I, I didn't want to make you show if you didn't have. And then he quickly turns over six five of clubs for the flop shake. 
So we get slow rolled by this player. Not really sure about my line here. I think I can just fold and look for a better spot. But anyways, end up losing that one. All right, guys, this next one is a pretty fun one. The under the gun player opens to $15. Under the gun plus one calls. And I'm on the button with 10-7 of hearts. And I make the call as well. The big blind calls too. So we are going four ways to a flop, which comes king, four, four, two hearts. So we flop ourselves a flush draw. The big blind checks. The under the gun player puts out a tiny C bet of $10. Under the gun plus one calls, I'm gonna call here as well, and the big mind folds. So we're going three ways to a turn card, which is the ace of spades. The under the gun player continues betting and puts out $10. Under the gun plus one calls again, and obviously gonna call here as well. We're getting an amazing price. Off to a river card, which comes the jack of diamonds. This time the under the gun player checks. The under the gun plus one player, that's $25. This was the same player who I had stacked with king queen and who had slow rolled me with the six five of clubs. It seems like when he had really strong hands, he bet really big. And in this hand, he just called those tiny bets and then led the river once it's checked to him. So I actually thought that this was a good spot to maybe bluff. So I decided to raise to $90. The under the gun player folds right away and the under the gun plus one player looks at his cards and mucks them. So we end up getting this bluff through. It seemed like an okay spot to make a move and it ended up working out in this specific situation. So that was a really fun one. Last hand for the session, we looked down at nine eight of diamonds on the button. Three limps, I raise to $20 and two players call. Flop comes seven, ace, eight, two spades. Action checks through. Turn card is the jack of hearts. Action checks through once again. River cards the five of clubs. Under the gun player checks. The under the gun plus one player bets $20. And I don't think he's gonna have an ace here. I think he would have bet the turn or maybe even the flop. So with my pair of eights, I think calling is fine. So that's what I do. The other player folds and my opponent shows queen seven of spades. So we end up catching this bluff and winning this last hand. Those were the interesting hands for the Aria session. This ended up being a really sick session. Ran super well in the first few hands. The first two or three, I think, were within like 15 to 20 minutes. So got really, really lucky. And uh, we ended up playing for two hours and 33 minutes and booked a win of $413. Actually, I could just cash them out. Don't worry about it, yeah. All right, good luck, guys. Thank you for playing. You got ID on you, buddy? 713. You have a nice day. You too, buddy. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. In for 300, out for 713. Not including the $1 chip that I took, so actually 714. Really quick session, too. It was two hours and 30 something minutes. Amazing, super full now. I'm gonna go back to the Airbnb and try to do the hand histories for today. Really sick session. Today was the biggest winning day so far. So had great food, had great sessions. Won with kings this time instead of losing. So that felt really good. And uh, it's getting pretty late. So I'm gonna go to bed. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on day four. Try to get to the